Hi, Jeff Rick here with theCUBE. We're in Palo Alto. I'm joined here by Ariana Gradow. We're really excited. It's March, so it must mean madness, Ariana. Yeah, it's madness. Time so, for CUBE Madness. Time for CUBE Madness 2015. We had a great event last year uh, in the inaugural uh, CUBE Madness, and I just wanted to go through again, really, what are the objectives of CUBE Madness? Why do we do the madness? One is because it's March, and it's March Madness. But really the idea is to highlight some of the great interviews of terrific guests. We did over 900 interviews, over 1,000 guests, over 1,100 segments in 2014. So this in no way represents all of them or even maybe the best, but we wanted to get through, get a selection uh, of different types of guests, different types of shows, different types of interviews, and really bring it, bring it out. And we actually did increase the field this year, Ariana. We were only 32 last year, but Greg and Patrick and the team been working their tails off. We got the full <laughs> 64. We're gonna run the contest really in, um, in conjunction with regular March Madness. So you fill out your ESPN bracket, you, next year we'll have brackets for Cube Madness. So we'll kick it off uh, this weekend, as all Cube Madness does. We'll open up the voting, and then with each round of March Madness, we'll move to 32, then Sweet 16. The next weekend, we'll go to the Elite Eight, and then, of course, the Final Four, and then the final. So we hope you enjoy it. We hope you really, uh, the purpose again is to re-enjoy some of these great interviews from 2014. We're really blessed that we have so many terrific uh, folks that come on the Cube, share their knowledge, share their insight with our community, and we just want to highlight it. Awesome, yeah, lots of great interviews constantly going on. So voting begins this Thursday, is that correct? Right, voting begins Thursday, so we're releasing the brackets, we're releasing all the, the, the people you'll be able to go on and vote, do a side-by-side -side comparison of each of the interviews. And, uh, and, and cast your vote. And I All think right, we're going to. Awesome. Uh, so, what region are we so going to do here? We're going to delve into the Silicon Angle region. It's and, a tough uh, region. Yeah, we got lots of good interviews, lots of uh, tech athletes out there. And um, we're going to begin with Telly Whitney from Anita Borg Institute versus Charles Phillips from Infor. Yeah, this is a tough one. Um, who do you think, what are your thoughts on this? This is a tough one. So one of the tricks in, in uh, Cube Madness is really activating your social network. So these, these people come from very different backgrounds. Telly Whitney runs the Anita Borg Institute, one of the premier institutes really about women's issues, and we interviewed him last year at the Grace Hopper Celebration of Women in Computing. So Telly's got a huge fan base. She's a really active uh, lady. Charles Phillips, uh, tech, tech exec extraordinaire, uh, went from Wall Street to Oracle, left Oracle to really uh, be the CEO of Infor. They're completely transforming their business. They run a lot of great applications and now they're moving to the cloud. Big keynote speaker at AWS last year. But I don't know how active Charles is on his social side. Um, so that might, be, that might be difficult for him. So I think, I think Telly Whitney can activate her social map a little easier yeah, than, she's uh, got than a Charles lot of followers. will. So I'll, I'll go with Telly on that round. All right. Yeah, Telly has a lot of uh, a good, great fan base. I'm a fan myself. She does uh, a lot for women in tech. And, and we're hoping to be Grace Hopper uh, Celebration 15 this year. Awesome. All right. Who's next? Next, we got Adrian Ionel from Miran Mirantis, Mirantis. Mirantis versus uh, Joe Hellerstein from Trifacta. Interesting, interesting uh, setup here. Again, looking at the Twitter following. Joe has a, has a significant advantage, 5,000 Twitter followers, uh, Adrian only 500. But Marantis is making a lot of noise in the open space uh, world. They are doing a lot of promotion. Uh, they put on mm -hmm. this OpenStack Silicon Valley event, which is where we interviewed uh, Adrian. And in fact, he, he kind of turned the tables. He actually interviewed um, Martin Mikos. It was Martin Mikos' first interview coming uh, post the Eucalyptus acquisition. So that was pretty good. Uh, I don't know if either of them are super active on social. Uh, I think I'm going to go with Marantis on this. I think I'll go with Adrian. I think they will kick it into gear, and we'll see if we can get Joe to kind of make some noise out of Berkeley. He's one of, the, one of our Berkeley startups that we're a big fan of. Awesome. All right, the next matchup. It's a good one. Pod Mashri Warrior from Cisco and Bill Schmarzo, the Dean of Big Data from <laughs> EMC. What are your thoughts? Wow, Who do you two, think? Two uh, favorites. So again, Pad yeah. Mishri, uh, probably one of the biggest Twitter following, certainly in our population, 1.57 million Twitter followers. Wow. Uh, she's got a huge Twitter following, terrific interview, Red Hat Summit last year, talking about the third wave of the internet, which was really all about the internet of things and connected things and IoT, and, and Cisco's clearly right in the middle of that. On the other side, you have a Cube favorite, Dean, uh, the Dean of big data himself, Bill Schmarzo, many time Cube alum, really active social guy. He's got his book. We just had him on again, Big Data SV. He's on quite frequently. But 
Bill's only got uh, 2,000 Twitter followers. So can Bill, in a really active campaign and activation, uh, mm -hmm. knock off Padmasri? Uh, actually, I think he will. Because mm -hmm. I think Padmasri has so many followers, I don't think she's quite as active in kind of curating it and keeping it going. But who knows? If she, uh, if she just turns on the spigot a little bit, uh, Bill's going to have a tough time with that matchup. Great matchup. Two really uh, phenomenal tech athletes. So let's just interject really quickly. Do you think, what, do you, what are some tips? Do you think it's really all about social activation for getting, uh, getting, the nec getting into the next round? Or what are the, some tips for um, people that are in this, this year's Cube Madness? How are they going to win? How can they get to the next level? Yeah, I think Thoughts? it really is social activation, uh, Ariana. You know, the, the types of interviews <laughs> that we have, the breadth of interviews that we have, the topics of interviews that we have are so varied that it's really hard to do a one-to-one -one comparison of what Pad Mishri was talking about, Internet of Things, and Bill Shmarzo was talking about uh, big data. And he, he gives a ton of customer examples. He spends Tuesday through Thursday in the field with customers. So I, I do think it's really a social activation. Can you get people excited about your your uh, your interview? Can you get people excited about your bracket? Can you activate that crowd? And are you excited about it? And I will tell you that last night, as, uh, as Greg and the team were started to leak out some of the you've been selected <laughs> for 2015, the call started coming in, and people want to know, are they in? Who's in their bracket? <laughs> Who's in their region? So the people that are into the game and into the fun uh, and, and really get into it, I think are the ones that activate their community and you can mm -hmm. see it in the results. Awesome. All right, next matchup. Joshua McKenty from Cloud Foundry versus Jesse Proudman from Proudman. Yeah, Jesse Proudman um, has an interesting, you know, it's basically OpenStack as a service. That was another interview at the OpenStack Silicon Valley. Well, the OpenStack Silicon Valley uh, show turned out to really kick out a lot of of the uh, of the candidates and Joshua McKenty also there a founder of OpenStack who recently left Piston Cloud to go to Cloud Foundry Pivotal um, that was his f uh, last interview at, at at Piston Cloud before mm -hmm. he announced that he was was making the move um, both of them really active on Twitter neither has a really giant social graph like Padma Street but this will be a good one because they're both super active in the OpenStack community. Um, they love to get it on on Twitter, and <laughs> this will be uh, this will be a, a fun one. I think I'm going to go with Jesse though. Jesse, Jesse uh, likes to make noise. He likes to get out there, and I think that he will take on this challenge and and really activate his community. Awesome. All right. All right. Next matchup, we got Carl Carla Gentry from Analytical Solutions. And Dave Covell, uh, the president of the San Jose Earthquakes. Yeah, interesting. Again, how, yeah. how do you compare these interviews? They're completely different people talking about completely different topics. Um, Carla Gentry, uh, big data influencer. She comes to a lot of IBM events. In fact, I think this interview is from the IBM Inside event 2014. Mm -hmm. She's super active on Twitter. She's got a huge following on Twitter. People respond to mm -hmm. her on Twitter. Uh, she's going to light it up. Dave Caval, his business is getting people excited, right? They just finished the new Avaya Stadium with the earthquakes. He, he joined us at, at our inaugural Sports Data SV last year. Uh, they're going to host our Sports Data SV this year. He's an innovator. He has, you can buy a t-shirt with Bitcoin um, at, a, at a San Jose Earthquakes game. So uh, this is going to be an interesting challenge. Two very different audiences that they're going to activate. Uh, I think I got to go with Carla though, because Carla is just so active, and Dave's probably going to be busy promoting really? uh, earthquakes um, games more than he is going to be uh, Cube Bennis. But he, <laughs> that, I wouldn't be surprised if he pulls an upset there. Yeah, and he does have a big following. A lot of people love the earthquakes. Yeah, so yeah they, they might do. just vote for him just because of that. They and do. You never know. <laughs> All right, we got Lena Joshi from Splunk versus Katie Linendahl. The, of course, the tech expert. Yeah, a couple, uh, a couple women in tech. This is an interesting one. Lena uh, Joshi's been on a couple times at Splunk. She um, was kind of quiet and reserved the first time we had her on two years ago in 2012. But last year when we had her on at Splunk.com 2014, literally there were people cheering walking by that saw her on really? stage. So she has a big following. Um, it's, it's a little bit more isolated than Katie's, obviously, is really around Splunk and the Splunk community and Splunk Big Data. Again, can she activate it? I don't know that I haven't seen her a ton on, on Twitter, but uh, she's clearly a rising star at mm -hmm. Splunk and, and excited to have her in the contest. Katie Lenendell, 
Um, I mean, she's Emmy Award winning TV gal. If she, <laughs> if she decides to activate, she'll probably win in a landslide. But again, you sometimes wonder about some of these folks that have these giant social graphs. You know, are they actively managing? Is it really personal? Mm -hmm. Has it grown to the size where now they're, they're just kind of following a star, they're following a media personality versus really following an individual and can mm -hmm. she activate it? If she activates it, I think she wins in a landslide. But it'll be interesting to see what Lena can do with Inc, a relatively small community, but can she get it going? So you really see from last year, did you really see the, the people on the cube, the um, competitors really charging it up, activating their crowds and activating their audiences and their fan base and their followers? Yeah, pushing absolutely. Pushing their interviews out? Absolutely. If, if we go back to last year and just look at the final four, right? The final four was Abi Mehta, um, who you've met from mm -hmm. Trusada, super active guy, high energy guy, um, really got into it, activated his community. We had George Sleshman, <laughs> who was just on top of it from IO data centers, very much on top of it. He activated. You have Jason Stowe, Cycle Computing, it's on at AWS. Hi, Jason, who won the incumbent. Sorry, we didn't get you in this year. <laughs> who's, who, whose business is basically creating temporary supercomputers out of excess AWS resources. Mm -hmm. He got way into it. And then Michael Dell. Now, the Michael Dell one, I don't know if, I don't, can't remember if we got direct evidence of Michael Dell activating his community. It'll be interesting because this year he's a private company. Uh, and this year I think he's a little bit louder. And of course, they just announced the Michael Dell v. Um, Benioff contest, right? A Fitbit contest as part of their yeah. March Madness celebration of who can get more steps. And I think Michael Dell's already pulled ahead by 17,000 steps last time I checked <laughs> Twitter and Benioff <laughs> can't figure it out. So I don't know if it's a company wide <laughs> or just the two of them, the battle of the billionaires. But clearly Michael Dell gets into it. He gets into the contest. Mm -hmm. So I really do think it's about activating your graph. And again, you have to sustain it over uh, six rounds of voting, right? From 64 to 32, yep. 32 to 16. So reposting the interviews. So you got to really. be into it and you got to stick with it. And again, we map this contest to the excitement of the, of the actual March Madness, which basically encompasses three weekends. So All yeah, right. absolutely. You got you to gotta be uh, activating your people. All right, next we got Merv Adrian from Gartner and James Waters from Cloud Foundry. Another really interesting uh, matchup. Merv Gardner, uh, or Merv Adrian from Gartner, really frequent uh, Cube guest, loves to come on, always has uh, something to say, especially around the big data space. Got a pretty active community, 19,000 Twitter followers. Mm -hmm. And he's pretty active on Twitter. He likes to share things. Uh, and he definitely has a following. And <laughs> you've got James Water, who's opinionated from Cloud Foundry Pivotal. We had him on at, at uh, uh, OpenStack Silicon Valley he had a ton to say. Pivotal is mm -hmm. really making a move right now and, and really kind of coming out uh, of their shell. Not that they were totally in it before, but they really seem to be making noise. And James is opinionated and likes to share his opinion. Mm -hmm. So uh, on that one, I think I'm going to go with James. I think James will uh, will take the uh, take the challenge and and try to uh, outgun Merv. That'll be a good one. Yeah. All right, and the last bracket or last little segment is Brian Dahl from GitHub and Lou Tucker from Cisco. Yeah, interesting what are your thoughts? combination, right? So GitHub is, is really an anchor system that people use now. And in fact, if you start to notice on the people's business cards and, and citations on their emails, people are putting their GitHub account, right? It's where mm -hmm. people share open source content. And now that open source is getting bigger and bigger, it's where there's a lot of code. There's a lot of people involved in GitHub question is, does Brian himself have really an activated social network? Not so much with about one and a half thousand Twitter followers. Lou Tucker um, recently joined Cisco. Again, really enthusiastic guy. Cisco's making heavy moves in OpenStack, big moves on the data center uh, with, um, with uh, Jim McHugh, who I think is in one of our other brackets. I think Lou's got this one. I think he's more of an evangelist. I think he m is more uh, getting the word out. And so mm -hmm. I, I think I got to go with, uh, with Lou on this one. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, GitHub's it's popular. It's kind of like a celebrity job these days, and uh, that just might have have him get a one-up. Yeah, you know? yeah, you just, you know, you just never know, or, or, or the other thing you just don't know is that there's somebody in their graph, there's somebody that's maybe not them directly, but yeah. is influential, that gets behind the campaign, if you will, almost like a campaign manager, that can push it over the edge. We didn't see much of that, but I mean, that would be a potential thing with like a GitHub. Do you ever see the companies activating, helping activate the interviews as well? Uh, it's hard to tell, you know, in the big company, no, I don't think so. But in the littler companies, you know, how much of the company is really driven by 
the, the primary executive. And I think mm -hmm. like Avi Meta, uh, for sure, you know, it's obvious, you know, how much of the company Traceda is Avi Meta? Probably mm -hmm. quite a bit. Uh, Michael Dell, probably quite a bit if he gets behind it. But I think um, more of the smaller companies, you see more of the company focus versus the bigger companies, it's yep. really the individual. Or the work group or the business unit they're involved in. All right, so who do you think will advance from the Silicon Ingle region to Cube Madness, the final four? 2015, uh, tough one. Uh, on the left side of our bracket, you know, I think Bill's gonna be really active if he can get past Padma Shree. I think Telly Whitney could really activate her community. On the other side, Carla Gentry is just on Twitter and she just <laughs> likes to share stuff and she pushes it hard. And then James Waters, uh, I think could be the dark horse coming out because again, he's got lots of opinions that he likes to share and, and, and that's why we love having him on the cube. But I think for this one, I think I'm gonna go with the, uh, with the woman in tech. I think Carla Gentry, sorry Bill, I think Carla Gentry might uh, just pull it out in the end and make that final four. All right. I think that my per I personally think Telly Whitney, you know, on the left side, she's got a big following. I'm a big fan. Women in tech and another woman in tech on the right on the right side, um, Katie Lindahl, um, big following. And if she can activate it right, she's she's definitely got yeah, an upper 21, hand. Twenty one thousand followers, and then Padma Shree sitting there with her one point five seven. I mean, mm -hmm. Padma Shree sent out like three tweets. Uh, that could be a landslide, but could she sustain <laughs> it during the whole time? That'll, that's to be told, but we're really excited. Uh, this is the, the, the CUBE interview show, the preview show. Um, we're releasing the brackets, we're releasing the participants. We've got four brackets all together, the Silicon Angle region, the Tech Athlete region, the CUBE region, and the Wikibon region. Enjoy the contest, vote often, uh, watch the results, track it with your friends. Thanks for watching the CUBE Badness Preview Show 2015.